Hello there, I am Jake Roper, as you probably know because you clicked on this video. But today I am joined with someone that I, I really admire and appreciate. He's one of my favorite authors, Mr. David Sedaris. Certain essays that you write about talk about your mother's death or your sister's suicide. And they are these things that generally are just whispered amongst families or friends. But is it therapeutic to you to, to give these emotions, these, these meanings to people that are kind of this anonymous crowd of readers? No, writing's never been cathartic to me, never. It helps me make sense of the world. But that said, it's not cathartic. Does that, does that make sense? It's not therapy for you. Um, yeah. But I meet so many people now who have had somebody in their family commit suicide, maybe because they don't have that outlet, you know, maybe because they can't write about it themselves or they've never, it's not their job to find the words for it. And they kind of know exactly what it is that I'm talking about because it's always assumed, oh, you must feel so guilty, you know, like you could have saved that person's life and you didn't and you must feel so bad. But I haven't met anybody who feels that way. You know, nine times out of 10, the tragedy isn't the suicide, it's the person's mental illness or, you know, their alcoholism or whatever it was that put them in that place. But most of the people who I've met realize there was nothing they could have done to change it. That's been really interesting to me, to write about that and to be introduced to this whole sort of community that's out there that I never thought I would be a part of and that I hear from and that I really, I really like these people. And I'm always happy to meet someone from that club. You know, I forget all about YouTube. Like I'll look at snapping turtles, mm -hmm. eating things. And so I'll look at like 18 snapping turtle videos and then I forget about YouTube for Until months. the next time we yeah, need to watch months. Snapping Turtle videos. So I wanted to ask you about what motivates you or drives you to create. I don't know, it just always meant something to me to take, I don't know, a piece of paper and fill it up. I guess it's just a habit, you know, just something I get up every day <laughs> and I do. I don't ever not do it. Yeah, but is the intention always for it to be shared? Or have you kind of gotten into the zone where some things are meant to be shared, but some things are just you expressing yourself and they're meant just for that purpose? I mean, write in a diary every day. Yeah. And so not all of that is meant to be shared. Use the example of being in France at the doctors and in your underwear. And sharing that, it wasn't something that you were embarrassed by. It wasn't something to hear what you said was that when people hear that story, they feel like they know you, but they don't really know you. It's not chipping away a part of yourself. How do you express to people the delineation between those two? I guess I don't. I think I give the illusion of exposing myself and then people come up and they say, oh, I know you, I feel like I know you. You know, they definitely know more about me than I know about them. They know where I grew up and they know where I live now and they know who I vote for and, you know, so it's definitely uneven. Totally. But it doesn't, it doesn't bother me any. One thing that stood out to me that David said was about how in relation to his personality and himself and how he shares it with the reader, he doesn't feel like he actually shares his true self, which is something that I think as a content creator on YouTube really resonated with me. I always feel that when I am sharing myself to you, the camera, which is then being viewed by people at computers or wherever, is that you're getting a version of me, a curated part of who I think you want me to be. And my understanding when I was talking to David about that, it seemed a similar way. There's certain parts of him that don't get shared because it's, it's for him, it's for those that he loves and not for this general amalgamation of people. The thing I really loved about Calypso, and this is what is true through all of his work, is just how intimate and, and funny, but at the same time introspective and sad, and it comes together in this way that once you're done with it, that aftertaste in your mouth is beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you for having me. There is, let me, oh gosh, these old bones. A wonderful book named Calypso, written by this gentleman right here. And you can watch BookTube right now at youtube.com slash originals or youtube.com slash learning. Look at that, there's options for you.